Amen. We'll get it. Praise God. The young people can go to children's church this morning. Christ. You'll find that if you go to uh, 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 the local bookstore or even uh, listen to a lot of, of uh, more uh, 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 contemporary songs that are written, I'm not just simply mean contemporary type of music in, it, in its genre, but uh, just contemporary across the board when we look at Christian music, uh, you'll find that, that, that the blood is not as spoken of as what it was in yesteryear. And uh, is there something we're missing? Is it still important? I, I'm, I'm going to clarify that question right away. There is a lot that's being missed. There's another gospel that is being preached. And it's important for us to look at the blood of Jesus Christ and what it means to us from a biblical point uh, uh, in, the, in the hour in which we live. Songs that were written, there is a fountain that is filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. When sinners plunge beneath the flood, they lose all their guilt and stains. Oh, the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Are you washed in the blood, uh, the, uh, the, the precious blood of the Lamb? And what about there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb? Uh, uh, Watchman Nee, you may have heard his name if, you've, if, if you know anything about uh, history of, uh, uh, of, of our, 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 our uh uh, our church and, and, and the church in general, but he preached a three-part sermon on the blood of Jesus Christ. The name Billy Sunday may ring out in your ears. Billy Sunday uh, was uh, uh, was known for his famous sermon, the blood of Jesus Christ. And Charles Spurgeon, uh, he preached the, the, the blood and the covenant. But our modern day treats the blood uh, 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 with uh, possibly a, a, a benign neglect because maybe it sounds uncomfortable. It sounds like something we don't want to speak of in society and, and per, uh, particularly what may be radically known as a professional setting. Uh, uh, the church, it, it is professional. Uh, however, the blood of Jesus Christ still needs to be talked about. And uh, 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 it may be you reviewed uh, uh, as a relic, possibly of yesteryear, uh, but the blood of Jesus Christ is important. And let me say as well, I also believe that, that demonstrative worship is important. If it seems relic or if it seems uh, a bit uh, viewed as something that, that needs to be neglected, uh, as, as something more important is on the scene. And also persistent faith. Sister Susan, you talked about that in your testimony this morning. Uh, persistence, faith needs to be something that, that, that we're uh, thinking of and something that is approached in our church. Uh, but Audrey Crouch, he wrote the song, The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. I wonder this this morning. I wonder if the blood could speak what it would say to us. If the blood could speak 
What would it say to us? And so in Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 22, the Word of God says, But ye are come unto, the Mount, uh, unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, and the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels. Wow. Think about that. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judgment of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkling of the blood that speaketh, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. That speaketh better things than that of Abel. So let's start there. So we're talking about Jesus Christ. We're talking about the blood of Jesus Christ that was spilled upon the cross. Blood has always been a theme that is from the Old Testament beginning all the way throughout the Bible to Jesus Christ giving His blood on the cross of Calvary all the way through even the book of Revelation that concludes the written Word of God that we know that we hold in our hands as the Bible. And so Abel, if you remember Abel, he was the innocent brother that was killed by his guilty brother Cain. And uh, in the, in the Word of God, uh, 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 Cain and Abel were the sons of Adam and Eve. They were the ones that we inherit the sin nature from. We're very familiar with the Garden of Eden, the fall of man, and how it has affected humanity. Even unto this day, sin affects us because of sin entering in in the Garden of Eden. And so we find that uh, it was the first uh, human blood that was spilled in the Bible. It was of an innocent person. Abel was innocent. Agree? Amen. Amen. Abel was innocent. Cain was guilty. Cain killed his brother. And innocent blood fell to the ground. And so there is the first case of blood being spilled. And it is of innocent blood of Cain. And uh, we find that, that God confronts Cain because of that. And a God who loves. Folks love to think about this, this God who loves. And let me say, God is still in the masculine sense. Not to, to, to in any way make someone feel inferior, but this God of the masculine sense, amen, He is a God of love, but He's also a God of justice. And love will also confront. If I love someone, if I love my wife, if I love my daughters, I confront them with, this is, uh, my daughters do something that is wrong. I confront them, you did this. Not because of any other reasoning, but because I love and my intention and my goal and my measure of success in their life will be that they love God. And I want to give them a legacy. Amen. In the life that I live. So love confronts. And so here it is. Uh, God who loves confronts this man who kills his brother. And he confronts him gently but compassionately. And, 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 and David said that he was made great because of the gentleness of God. Amen. And so here it is that that, that, that God comes by and He doesn't thunder on the rooftop, but He's kind of like a gentle nature. Amen. In confronting, not that there's anything wrong with, with, with thunder at times. Our spirit must be right. But He comes by and Cain, He denies knowing where Abel is. But God stops him in His tracks with this response. He says, the voice, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The blood is speaking. Innocent blood. You kill your brother who is innocent. The blood has a voice. And the blood speaks. In our text today, the text that I read, the Word of God says, the, blood, uh, the covenant to the blood sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Let's compare. So we have innocent blood being spilt in the, in the New, uh, Old Testament, that blood of, uh, 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 of Abel. We have innocent blood in the New Testament, that blood of Jesus Christ. Let's do a comparison between the two bloods. Let's do a comparison between Abel and Jesus Christ. And so when we look, Abel was a shepherd. Doesn't Jesus refer to himself as being the good and the chief shepherd? Abel died a violent death at the hand of his brother. The Word of God says that Jesus, amen, he laid down his life. He was wounded in the house of his friends. And 
so we see a comparison there. Abel's blood cries out and God heard it. The blood of Jesus speaks out and all of heaven pays attention to the blood of Jesus Christ. But there is also some contrast between that. Abel was not willing to shed his blood, although it was given. But Jesus Christ was willing to be a sacrifice. Get on board with me. We're going somewhere. Jesus Christ was willing to be a sacrifice for your and my sins and the sins of all humanity, amen, throughout the span of time, amen. Abel's blood cried out for revenge, amen, but Jesus' blood cries out for remission. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Abel's blood polluted the ground. It was sin. It was anger. It was wrong. It was murder. This world's affected by the blood and sin. But Jesus' blood, it gave the earth another chance. The earth groans for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Uh, there's another chance that's given to each one of us that someday we are going to see Him. Amen. But we can live victorious. Our life can be free from sin and the curse of sin. And and we can be free to live and honor God. Let me tell you something. Let me stop for a moment. I heard from a very a voice that ministers to people this week that we cannot live by biblical standards. I want you to know that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we can live by biblical standards. Amen. It makes us into the person that we internally long to be. And when we are intentional to give our life to Jesus Christ and live by the, 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 the life that He has put in us, we can live by every principle of God's Word and we can claim the promises that come from living it by those principles. Amen. We have the ability by the blood. Do you remember that there was a woman in, 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 in the New Testament that uh, she had a, a, an issue of blood? And, and so here it is, she suffered 12 years, and we hear the story. And, 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 and as we look at her, I can't help to think about something. Amen. It's important to have blood in our life. I know about it. Almost every day of my life. It's who I am and what I do with my occupation. Amen. We need the blood. Amen. And the Bible said that she had an issue of blood. But I want you to know that there's issues with every, uh, every blood. Amen. And we need the issue of Jesus' blood in our life. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It was a grisly death on Calvary, but it opened the gate of salvation. Peter said this, we are not redeemed with corruptible things as gold and silver. And he goes on down to say, but we are redeemed by the blood, of the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He was the lamb of God. Think about this. From the very beginning of the world, God had already knew that man was going to sin and He had already planned for His Son to come into humanity in, in human form. And He knew that that Emmanuel, God with us, would shed His blood and make a way for us to have a relationship with Him and give us a promise of eternity with Him. Amen. Jesus was born to believe. Jesus was born to believe. Believe. From Bethlehem to Calvary, he set his face with a purpose. And I don't know how modern gospel can ignore uh, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and, and how that they can think that there is not a, 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 a death in being a Christian. Amen. We die to self, but we live to him. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ, he gave his life, he gave his blood as an example that we as believers need to live a life that is dying to self and living to Him. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it gives us hope to live that way. We live in a world where people live to please themselves. Amen. Where they think about their own rights, their pleasures, and their thoughts hold sway above the Word of God. But I want to tell you, the blood of Jesus speaks of something better. Amen. The blood that was shed
said that was innocent, amen, way back in the very beginning, and even uh, the, the means by which shed Jesus' blood, amen, and that's men living by their own way and their own thought, but Jesus' blood was given that we can live and think differently. Amen. How do we love? How do we live holy? How do we live honorable to God in an ungodly society? Amen. Because we live a life that is crucified. Listen to me. You know what? God has placed me here as a pastor of this church. Let me tell you the legacy I'm going to leave behind. I don't care if in 60 years from now, if the Lord should tarry, if anyone ever remembers the name Bobby Seville as being the pastor. But what I want to have is an indigenous church that continues on and the message of living a life that is crucified unto self, but lived unto Jesus Christ. If that legacy could be passed on into every family, every home, and every generation, then that is the legacy I want to leave behind. Would I like a nicer and more beautiful building? Absolutely. But that is not the legacy I desire to leave behind. I want to leave a legacy of folks knowing Jesus Christ because Jesus has already left us that legacy through his blood. Amen. And it's ours to grab hold of and sink our teeth in and live to. And maybe we live unintentional or aimlessly, but this morning it's time to get focused and realize that real living of a life is grabbing hold of the blood of Jesus Christ and saying, I'm a sinner who's plunged beneath the flow and I've lost all my guilt and stain and I'm no longer live in sin and allow the power of sin to affect me and dominate me, but I'm crucified. I live differently. I live honorably unto God. Amen. That's where our real peace and joy and answers are. Amen. Mortifying the deeds of the flesh and taking up our cross daily. Being crucified with Christ. Amen. Sometimes it's like you're speaking to people in an unknown tongue. And I'm talking about religious people. Amen. They have eyes to see and they have ears to hear, but they don't hear or see. Yes, the issue is still with the blood. Jesus came to offer life to everyone. Paul said, I die daily. The modern Christianity is crucifixion free. God help us to be crucified. I want you to think about something this morning. I want you to imagine journey with me. Let's bring the Bible to life. I want to take you back to a time where God's people has been in captivity in Egypt and it's just about time that God is going to set them free. And so all of a sudden, God commands them about two weeks before they're going to cross over the, 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 the Red Sea and God opens up and we know that miraculous story. But think about this. Two weeks before, all of a sudden, God commands that they go out and they get, they, they, they get, they get a, a, a lamb. A lamb. Every one of them is to get a lamb. And they're to bring that lamb in the house. And can you imagine? Can you imagine what it's like? Imagine, if you will. Imagine your child and your oldest child. Uh, and, 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 and they love that lamb. And they're petting that lamb. Daddy, why do we have this lamb inside? I can hear one of my little girls saying that to me over and over. Daddy, why is this? Blah, 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 just a few questions. And I would, I would have to look and I would say, you know what? Because God said that the, this lamb needs to be brought in and washed. And there's coming a day where, where God is going to want us to sacrifice this lamb. And I would have to look my oldest in the eye just the way that you would and say, because if we don't have this lamb inside, and we do not crucify this lamb and apply the blood to the doorpost, then you will die when the death angel flies over Egypt. The oldest will die. Can you imagine? Let, let the emotion flow this morning. It's all right. Amen. Can you imagine what it would be like to look at your child and say that? And then that child sits there and pets that lamb over and over and over again to the land and the land and all that land makes its hands so nice and soft. And then there comes a day when God says, now's the time to crucify. And that lamb is crucified. And he says, now I want you to apply the blood to the doorpost of your house. And they go out and they paint it over the top of their house. The blood. And maybe that oldest helps. I don't know. But then the death angel flies over and everyone who has the blood applied to the house. Amen. A death does not enter in. Can I tell you this morning that when we apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our life by faith, amen, it says that when death comes by, it doesn't have power over me. Amen. When death comes this way, it doesn't have the ability because the blood still speaks. It has authority over death. It has authority over the sting of 
of death and over the power of the grave and to be absent from this body. Amen. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ means to be present with God. The blood still speaks this morning. It's important that we allow it to speak and it be applied to our life. Amen. Even as uncomfortable and, 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 and grotesque as it may appear to be to some people, the blood is still important. <clears throat> Think about how much one drop of Jesus' blood would be worth. At the dedication of Solomon's temple, let me just throw out some numbers. I don't want to be overwhelming, but think about these numbers. At the dedication of Solomon's temple, there were 22,000 oxen. There were 120,000 sheep. Uh, there was one lamb that was slaughtered for, uh, uh, for every 15 people. For 6 million people, that means that there would have been a total of 400,000 lambs that were slain. There were millions of dollars that were spent that day. And, and so uh, uh, as, as we look at that, we find that Christ is our Passover lamb. Amen. And so here it was that, 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 that for days in, in the brook that flowed by, there was, there was blood that was flowing uh, because of all the animals that gave their life. Can I tell you that the blood of Jesus Christ, just one drop, is more valuable than all those lamb and all those oxen uh, that are combined together. Just one drop because they would have to repeat sacrifice because it could not do what the blood of Jesus Christ could do. It was not rich enough to pay away the debt of sin. Amen. It was not rare enough uh, to satisfy divine justice. It was not strong enough in itself to break the chains of sin. It was not pure enough in itself to usher in righteousness. It was not powerful enough in itself to crush the head of the enemy. Amen. But one day, John, he's on the safari in Revelation, and he says, who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And the Bible says he looked in heaven and earth all around he couldn't find it until he saw the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. The one Lamb, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who His blood is sufficient this morning. The blood still speaks. The blood still has a voice. It can wash away our sins. Amen. It can redeem us. It can purify us. Amen. It can deliver us. It can usher righteousness in our life. That is the blood of Jesus. We have to have faith in it this morning, brother. We have to have faith in it this morning, sister. You know what? Four days of my life, I help doctors diagnose what is wrong with patients because they know something is wrong. Inconclusive studies, but what does the blood say? The blood says that you're enough to stand beneath the cleansing flood. The blood says that if you stand beneath it, that you are redeemed. Amen. That you are strengthened. That righteousness can be imputed unto you. Amen. Once again, to the son or daughter who stood in Egypt, the blood of the Lamb stands between you and the certain death. Can I tell you that the blood of Jesus is what stands between you and the certain death? It's one thing to die physically. But it's quite the other thing when someone dies spiritually. But the blood of Jesus Christ, it makes the difference. Sister Holly, if you would come this morning, what does the blood say? The blood still speaks. That death and destruction, they're not welcome here. The blood says that God's wrath will pass over me. You look at the Word of God in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that in heaven there are the saints who have been washed by the blood. They have washed their robes and they have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says that we overcome or they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and through the Word of the Testimony. What does the blood say? There's victory in Jesus. Do you remember a story that you've heard since you've been a little child in Sunday school? It was about a woman who lived in Jericho. The big walls of that city were all around. There was this woman who, she lived a very wicked life. 
when she walked through town, all the wives of the city looked at her with suspicion and with disdain because of the wicked, filthy life that she lived. Her name was Rahab. But Rahab believed in the God of Israel. And one day when two spies had jumped over the wall and come in and begin to evaluate the city, Rahab took and hid them. The, wife of the spies said to Rahab, Rahab, destruction is coming to the city. If you want to be saved, then I want you to take a scarlet thread and I want you to put it out your window. And whoever is in your house, when we come in to take over the city, whoever's in your house will find safety because of the scarlet thread. <clears throat> it's just little, it's just simple. It's just small and it's thin. But she placed faith in the crimson flow of a scarlet thread out her window. For every one of us, amen, we can be like Rahab. You begin to read of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you'll find tucked away in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. There's a woman by the name of Rahab, disdained by sin, disgraced, couldn't even respect herself, but she had the fortitude to trust in the word of the people who trusted in the living God. And because she believed in the living God of Israel, she acted by faith in a crimson stream. And her life was saved. Every one of us in here this morning, we can do the same thing. We can be grafted into the family of God if we will put faith in a crimson flow that comes from the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a simple act of faith. But the simple act will save us and has potential of saving our family. Amen. I know it's an uncomfortable message when we talk about the blood. It's not what's preached in a lot of modern day churches. But it will always be preached here as long as I'm here. Amen. We need the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. What does the blood say, Rahab? Amen. There is hope for anyone who is covered by the blood. Amen. It's amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. What does the blood say? It says that there may be sin in a person's life. Amen. Sin of the past. Amen. But the enemy can't find it because of the blood. Amen. It's removed as far as the east is from the west. Amen. It's buried in the depth of the sea. Amen. To be remembered no more. The blood says I'm free. The blood says I'm clean. The blood says I'm whole. The blood says I have fellowship with God. Amen. There is power in the blood this morning. We used to say this saying, Amen. When you get back to it, I plead the blood. What does that mean? It means that the blood protects, the blood delivers, the blood provides peace. Amen. If I could jump back for just a few moments back to that Passover where the blood was spilled. Everything aligns then with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ at Passover. But for Passover for the Jews, it was a new month and it was a new year. You know what that means to us as as, as, as folks in the United States, a new calendar, and it means that it's clean. We got a new year, old things are set behind, amen, fresh new things ahead. Do you know what the blood says? There's a new beginning. I don't care where you've been or what you've done, amen, the blood gives you a new slate, a new place. There's some folks in here that need to hear that. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I agree with that. Amen. That there's some folks in here that needs to delve beneath the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. You need to come to these altars and you need to get up. Amen. And look at the world knowing that there is a clean slate to your life. Amen. It's not what you had been, but it's who you are in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The enemy can't taunt you and haunt you. Amen. And give you a rough time because sin can't be found any longer. The blood of Jesus Christ has washed it away. Amen. The blood. The blood. I want to close by saying this. The 
to the last book of the Old Testament verse. Ours is Malachi, but in the Jewish Bible, it's Zechariah. And Zechariah was a high priest. You'll find that our Zechariah speaks of a high priest named Joshua. And Joshua had all types of accusations against him. He was a picture of Israel with all types of accusations. His garments, they were flawed and they were dirty. But the Lord rebuked Satan and said, Have not I chosen him? Heaven looks on these courts and takes away his filthy garments. That's us. When we stand beneath the blood of Jesus Christ, when we're doing the work that he's called us to do, and we trust in the blood, heaven says, the filthy garments are in our way. I see them. How many in here this morning? Let's get it.